At the end of its debut performance, the Hornet lowers its heavy-duty gear for a graceful landing. Before any fighter goes into service, the pre-production models get pushed to their limits and beyond. Each one of the 20 pre-production aircraft has to pass a specific test before the actual Hornet gets to fly. Some get tested for high-speed maneuverability. Others for weapons carrying and release. And another will face the grueling spin test simulating a total loss of control. Here the Hornet performs beautifully, quickly coming out of the spin and regaining control. An onboard computer tackles disorienting situations and sets the pilot straight. Will the computer stop you from over g this? Yes, it will. In all configurations? The only way that you can uh, over g this airplane is if you press down on the G override switch. You got a G override switch? In case we need to pull like a little more than we need to, it's for, mostly for operational, but we have so many flight control surfaces, the Legacy has the same same number of, uh, or the same flight control system that we do, ours are just bigger. But it, it'll coordinate every move that you make with the stick. Um, like even if you're at really low speeds, it knows what altitude you're at, how fast you're going, what the air density is, and whenever you move the stick, the airplane just calculates what it thinks that you want to do. Yeah. And uh, it'll just perfectly coordinate the rudder, the flaps, I'm like really... a, the flats move, the ailerons will move, and uh, you can. There's a couple of magic moves that you can do with this airplane. That magic you, moves. Yeah, that you probably can't do uh, in the other, just because it's always perfectly coordinated. Well, the computer can fly the plane better than you can. I mean, that most people you know, shudder when, when folks say that, but a computer that has the ability to man manipulate each control service independently yep. can do more than any single pilot can do in an aircraft. Tests continue on the Hornet. Planes face the Air Force torture test, subjected to artificial weathering that represents years of exposure to extreme heat and cold. This F-18 gets tested on carrier landing and takeoff procedures on a land base. On an actual carrier, there's no margin for error, no second chance. Simulated catapult takeoffs and high angle of descent landings put the prototype F-18s through their paces. In heavy crosswinds, the computer control struggles to keep tons of high-tech equipment traveling in a straight line. On November 3, 1979, 
The F-18 finishes its sea trials after 32 successful takeoffs and landings from the carrier USS America. The F-18 Hornet needs only about 2,000 feet of runway for takeoff in its normal combat configuration without external tanks. After a battery of tests on land, the new F-18 Hornet must be put through its paces on a real carrier deck. On the 30th of October, 1979, Lieutenant Commander Dick Richards makes the first F-18 carrier landings. Prototype number three gets subjected to continual testing at sea, performing constant touch and goes. Finally, the ultimate challenge, a carrier landing at night, a test of the pilot as well as the plane. So, when it comes to the carrier landing, I mean, is it, is it really as tough as everybody says? What is that really like? Well, it just seems like it happens so fast. Honestly, during the daytime, if the weather's good and everything, it can be fun. With the boat moving and the airflow over the carrier so yeah. many different ways, it gets a little sporty. You never really know what's going to happen, so there's not any time to really just relax and just kind of fly. You're always doing something. It it's, uh, takes a lot out of you just a little bit at a time. During nighttime, though, it doesn't matter how good the weather is. I guarantee you there's not one single Navy <laughs> pilot that enjoys that. I, don't, so, I can't think of anything I hate more than landing on a boat at night. But you got to do it. I mean, what, you got no other option. Yeah, you have to do it, so. The prototype F-18 torture testing tells the Navy what to expect from its new economical high-performance aircraft. In the F-18, McDonald's clear understanding of the Navy's requirements and Northrop's brilliant YF-17 design have come together to produce a sophisticated fighter without compromise. After prototype testing, the Navy scraps plans to build separate attack and fighter F-18s. The single, versatile design will do it all. By November 1980, the Navy takes delivery of the first fully operational airframe, now the newly designated F-A-18. With great fanfare, the Hornet goes into commission. It's a proud day for the first squadron to receive the F-A-18, and a proud day for the entire Navy. Two-seat versions of the F-A-18 help crews get familiar with the plane destined to become one of the most important aircraft in Western defense. <laughs> 